Hi everyone, Gigabeef here. Today we're going to be looking at the many different variants of AK in Tarkov, as there are a lot and they are all subtly different. By the time we finish, you'll have a good understanding of the key differences and be able to both confidently buy and mod them to your specific requirements and not waste money whilst creating your loadouts. So let's get started with the broadest overview, and that is on calibre. In Tarkov, AKs such as the AKM are found in the classic 7.62x39 Soviet calibre, which are the big chunky rounds that we all know and love. These sit alongside the AK-74 series as well, which run the modern 545 calibre, which is like the Russian equivalent of NATO 556. A niche set of AKs do actually run off 556 directly, and we'll see how they fit into the picture later on. You can see which calibre a weapon uses in the name itself. So the next question that comes is, what do all the letters mean? When it comes to the different AKs, it is important to understand the letters in the names to figure out which one that you might need. Let's start with the beginning and look at the S. So an S in the name means stock. For stock, this has a special folding stock. This usually means that it's not replaceable, so you have to be a bit careful, but you can get a good discount if you don't intend on adding a meta stock anyway. We'll talk about this in a little bit in the build section, but you can see that there's a folding stock on this AK rather than the fixed one. Next up, we're going to look at a gun that has an N in the name. So for the N, the N stands for night vision scope, but in reality, this means that it has a dovetail mount on the side for either mounted scopes or rails. This is good if you want to use the PSO 4 times, the side mounted EKP red dot, or basically anything that fits to the side like other mounts that goes on this clip here. Next we're going to look at M. M stands for modernised. There are actually no older versions of the 762 AKs like the traditional AK-47, so the AKM is already the modernised version for 762. However in 545 there is an AK-74M which comes with replaceable stocks that are folding and a night scope very similar to the N model. U corresponds to a very short version of an AK, so this is seen on the AK-74U series. These are known as the Baby AK and they're very small, and this is exclusively used in this series in Tarkov. One final letter to look at is the B. I wouldn't worry about this one too much, as this one is only for one very specific gun, which is the AKS-74UB. It comes silenced by default, but because it's only used for this one weapon, you're really only going to see it here. This lettering scheme can be mixed and matched in the AKM and 74 lines of different AKs to different effects. So you have things like the AKM, which is the modernised AK as standard. The AKMS is the same version but with the folding stock. The AKMSN is the same folding stock version, but this one has a dovetail mount as well. Likewise from the base AK74, you have the AK74N, which has got a night scope on it or other scope, M for modernised with a night scope and folding stock and slightly more modern, and AKS74 with a folding stock. Practically speaking, there are three broad series of AKs in Tarkov. The AKM series, the AK-74 series, and the AK-100 series, which we haven't touched on yet. The AKM and the AK-74 series use the letter scheme that we've discussed already. The AK-100 series, however, is a little bit different, but easy once you get to know it. There are five weapons in this line, from the AK-101 to the AK-105. The pattern goes full-length rifle first, then carbine in each calibre. So 101 is the full length in 5.56, 102 is a carbine in 5.56, 103 is full length in 7.62, 104 is a carbine in 7.62. And then finally there's a small exception on the 105, because that only this gun exists and there is no 106 here, so this is a carbine in 5.45. As these are the newest AKs, they all come with a dovetail mount and folding yet replaceable stocks using the AK locking mechanism piece. I just want to take a quick moment to thank everyone who's subbed so far to the channel. For those who haven't, if you find these videos useful, please consider dropping a like and a sub, as it really helps to build the channel and helps me to bring you guys more content like this. Let's get back to it. Next up I want to talk a little bit about stocks. Deciding on what to buy for your builds is a combination of the various features of each model. For budget builds, I would always advise on getting the S version of the various weapons, of which the AKMS or the AKMSN are my personal favourites, given that I'm a fan of the 7.62 calibre in general. The S versions are normally cheaper on the flea, as you can't mod the stock to something better, which means that they'll never be full meta weapons, hence the discount. Use this to your advantage, if you weren't going to replace the stock anyway, to get a cheaper weapon, and conversely, don't bother trying to buy a full AKM if you're going to leave the stock on wood, as you're paying for the functionality or flexibility that you aren't actually going to use. With that said, let's move on to the basic builds. As a quick aside, if you're having trouble understanding parts of the modding system, please check out my guide which I'll link to above and in the description. It can take a little bit to get used to the way that it functions, but once you understand the principles of the system it will start to make more sense, and your life will be a lot easier. So with the stock decision out of the way, you should decide if you're looking for a close or long range weapon. For close range you have a few options. You could leave the weapon as iron sights, you could add a laser onto the side, 
You could add a red dot using the TTO1 mount, like so. Or you could use a rail dust cover, like the Bastion or the B33, like in this weapon here. The unfortunate part about modding in Tarkov at level 1 is that you're actually not able to buy any red dots, or the TTO1, or the Bastion, but I'll cover attaching the laser in a moment, as this is possible right from the beginning. The TTO1 is a Prapor level 2 mod, but it is my favourite for cheap close range builds as it allows you to attach a PKO6 or a Pillard Weaver red dot very easily by replacing the rear iron sight with a little rail, which is compatible with certain red dots. However, it doesn't support all of them, for example the EKP on this weapon, which you see a lot early game. For this, you'll need a rail dust cover, which gives you a full length Picatinny rail on top of the gun. This is the same if you want a real proper scope, like a big one, 4x, 6x, 8x. For long range, at the beginning of the game, by far the easiest way is to use any N series weapon, 74M or any of the 100 series, and you can then buy a PSO scope from Prapor for under 20,000 rubles that fits onto the dovetail. On this mount you could also fit any other side mounts that you want like the Axion Cobra, the B13 or the Pillad, which gives the ability to attach any other scope with the correct interfacing piece as an alternative. Again here you could use the Bastion or one of the other better receivers such as the Fab Defense. This will let you use other scopes like the Elcan or the ACOG with their relevant attachments directly on the weapon. The Bastion is the cheapest of these full Picatinnies which gives you the most flexibility, but it isn't available at level 1 and it isn't cheap until you have Skier level 2 as they are all bought up on the flea market readily. It also has its own negative stats, so there are some downsides to using it, such as minus 2% accuracy. Personally, I never use this for red dots, as the TTO1 is a better option, as I can always use a PK06 or a Pillad Weaver instead. I don't need to use the EKP. For level 1 builds this wipe, there's actually a quite surprising availability for some average modding. Early wipe, I've really enjoyed this build, which is a hybrid long range AK with a laser for close quarters, and this is buildable at level 1 if you have an N version of the AK. The key here is the AK-100 handguard, which is available from Prapor at level 1. This handguard lets you attach both a foregrip and a laser, and is barely more expensive than any of the other basic versions of the handguard, but gives you so much more flexibility. Grab the basic foregrip from Peacekeeper for a little bit of extra ergo, and you need to spend money with him anyway to get him to level 2. Then, you can get the NC Star laser from Skier, which is now also on his level 1. With the N-series weapons, we now know that we can use the PSO from Prapor, which is level 1 as well. This will give you a 4 times AK firing 7.62 with 8 extra ergo, and you can hold ADS for longer, with a laser attachment for around an extra 30,000 rubles to mod the gun. Personally, I think this is incredible value for money. From this point, you should mod your weapons in terms of the order of importance of the mods themselves, looking at the value to the performance that they give. Although not purchasable at level 1, compensators and stock pads should be the next thing that you prioritise in the second tier of mods that you can buy from traders. I tend to use the Dynacomp, which is slightly cheaper, even though it gives a small negative debuff to ergonomics, it gives you minus 8% recoil, and this thing is extremely cheap. If you just flick to the flea market, you can see once you have the right level for it, level 2 mechanic, it's only 2,700 rubles, which is insane value. Same goes for the buttstock. Once you get to level 2 Prapor, this thing gives you minus 5% recoil, and again if we go and look, it's only 3,400 rubles. This is also incredible to get. After this, you should look at handguards and foregrips last. There is a big difference in price to performance. The best foregrip that you can get in the game removes 5% recoil, which is the same as the butt pad, but it's going to cost way, way, way more. So if you're looking at budget builds, I wouldn't really worry about it and just use any old foregrip that you can get your hands on. One final tip to really sneak out that last bit of value out of your AKs is look for red AKs on the flea market. Don't always have this box checked, show functional items, as that you can get some real good discounts. For example, this AK here is red, does have a stock, and is going to be very, very easy to fix. AKs only need a gas tube, a handguard, and a pistol grip not to be red anymore. So if you look here, the difference between ones down here at 23k and fully working ones up here at 30k, you're basically paying 7 grand more, even though you could fix this weapon yourself for around 3. The only thing that you need to be very, very, very careful about with the 762 series is because there is no lock for the stock on these versions. The versions here where people have taken off the stock and sold it to traders, you will have to go back and buy the stock off the flea market because traders don't supply this piece. Buying a red AKMS with no stock will leave you buying a wireframe stock from the flea market at 8 to 10k rubles to get it back, so don't get caught out by this, it ends up not being cheaper half the time, so make sure it has this wireframe stock on it already. So that's all for today everyone, feel free to let me know in the comments which has been your favourite build so far in this new wipe. 
Armed with the information in this video, you should be able to confidently choose, build and mod your AKs, be effective in raid and not spend unnecessary rubles paying for features that you don't need. So ta for now, and as always, have fun in your raids.